There was a House bill to make abortion illegal this last week. Good morning. HB 896. And of course, Jeffries ignored it and didn't tell anybody about it. Children, ask your parents why it's legal to murder babies and why nobody does anything about it. The last two years, um, there's been an abolitionist bill in Texas and nobody even hardly knows about it. And the abolitionist bill is to make abortion illegal in Texas. So four years ago at the Republican Party convention, mm -hmm. me and about 10 guys walked in with um, abolition flyers and we said, uh, we were handing them out, right? And we were like, hey, you know, um, we're abolitionists. We're trying to make abortion illegal. Right. And all the Republicans are like, oh, well, we're with you. Right. We're, we're pro-life. Good morning. And we're like, no, 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 we're calling you to repent of being pro-life. Stop regulating when, where, and how, and let's make a bill that will actually make it illegal. Okay. It'll stop regulating Georgia just did that this last week. Right. You know why? Because my friends, abolitionists, mm -hmm. did, did that work, right? And now it's going to be uh, uh, stopped by a federal judge. Well, and so that but bill will not go anywhere until it hits the Supreme Court. So all the why does Texas and why does because why do our, our congressmen? Right. Well, here's why. Our abolitionist bill... Our abolitionist bill, in the bill, it says we're going to ignore the federal government and the Supreme Court. Because where the Supreme Court ignores the Constitution, mm -hmm. we need to ignore the Supreme Court, right? So the number one legislative priority for the Republican Party of Texas was to make abortion illegal that year, right? And there was just 10 of us that walked in, nine, 10 of us that walked in and called them to repent. It was the number one legislative priority to abolish abortion in Texas, right? So we, they actually came up with a bill to make abortion illegal in Texas. Almost nobody got behind it, right? No, almost nobody, all right? So it died in committee. So this um, legislative uh, session, same exact thing happened again, all right? They made it the number one legislative priority in Texas, came out with the bill, Republican pro-life leaders, Jeff Leach, all right, killed it in committee and didn't let it go to a vote, all right? 300 people showed up for the bill, five people showed up against the bill, and they still killed it, all right? And again, in the last four years, you've never even heard about an abolitionist bill in Texas, right? Because your pastor is a pro-lifer, which means they only regulate. So in other words, if rape was legal, all right, if rape was legal, your pastor would be, as a regulationist, would say, okay, let's make bills that say you can only rape women after they're 12. You say they should live at least 10 years without getting raped, right? You're so, a lot of assumptions. No, no, what I'm saying is, I'm using this as an analogy. Right, well, I mean, what's worse? What, what, what he does do. Right, but what's, what's worse, rape or murdering a baby? Huh? What's worse, rape or murdering a baby? They're both horrendous. Which one's worse? Would you rather get raped or would you rather get murdered? I would. What I'm would not, you? I'm not choosing. I'm saying yeah, but if you to. had to. No, I'm not. I don't so you're not going to. So not one's to. not worse than the other. They're both the same. They're both horrendous. They're both horrendous. I agree. We, we should prosecute murderers and uh, right. stop rape. Right. But your pastor doesn't do that. Good morning. He regulates. He only works and helps and supports bills that regulate child sacrifice not make it illegal because that's what it is it's child sacrifice so instead of a girl um, a girl gets pregnant and she wants to finish high school so she sacrifices her child she aborts her child Good morning. right that's what she does she sacrifices the child a girl's in college she gets pregnant she doesn't want to deal with the baby because she wants to finish her college degree so she sacrifices the child you know she's not the one making the sacrifices to take care of that kid the kid is making the sacrifice, right? So it's child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So never in the history of Texas has there ever been a pro-life bill to make abortion illegal in the last 43 years, ever. Okay. In fact, thank you, man. So, and it was the Baptist. If you can go back to the Baptist website, your Baptist okay. website, and look at their position throughout history. And in 1973 abortion was acceptable to the Baptist. They actually dealt with Roe v. Wade. The Baptist dealt with Roe v. Wade and said for rape, incest, and life of the mother, abortion's okay. Have you heard uh, Pastor Jeffers? Yes, he's pro-life. Yeah, speak yeah. At, about Roe v. Wade being one of the three worst. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's against abortion. He's just not to make it illegal. He doesn't work to make it illegal. Why, when all these bills come up to make it illegal, 
does he not even tell people about it? Okay. You got Thank it. You. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just have to ask yourself, why does he not come out? Because this church alone could have sent a thousand people to go represent a, in Austin to make abortion legal. Like, I'm sure you would have wanted to go and stood in the gap and like the bible says be a voice for the voiceless you know i mean you're a good guy i could tell you know you're like a, a man that wants to like be a hero for god wants to be obedient to god wants to see god in his life you know like i could i can see that in you right and if there was an opportunity to make abortion illegal you would support that, I believe, mm -hmm. right? But you don't even get to know about it unless some crazy Homer Simpson guy comes out here to tell you about it. You have to sign and repent, church. So right. you're saying we are sinning for not doing enough. Is, is, that, is that the message you're trying to send with that, putting me on YouTube? Well, the, the church repent sign, we're the church, right? We need to repent of our apathy of ignoring child sacrifice, regulating child sacrifice. We need to repent of that. Repentance is one of the greatest gifts God's ever given us. You gotta go? Yeah, okay, I'll take your signs. Right? We have to repent of that. The church needs to repent of that. So, and once we repent of that, then God tells us what to do, how we should act, right? That's all I'm saying. It's not a calling a, um, people to repent is a, is a, gift it's a beautiful thing yes. you know so that's that's part of what we do we call this the church repent project do you i've seen this be more effective on because i've watched abolitionist youtube channels they, you guys are more effective at abortion centers well do you do do you do yeah. this at yes okay definitely uh, okay. but Up see in plano well, Richardson. no, there isn't one in Plano. There's one in Richardson. There's a plan there. Right. But Richardson. they don't do abortions. They just plan plan B. We go to the ones down here at Southwest Women's Clinic, you know. But um, that is to try to talk women out of having abortions. What we're doing here is no, trying... No, no, You should go there to witness. Well, no, we do. You know, when they're Christians, we're like, no, hey... No, no. Say that there's forgiveness for God. No, no, we do that. The... We, we do that, you know. Through repentance, there's forgiveness, right? Through surrender, there's forgiveness. But so, so we do that there, right? And and I talk women out of having abortions. It, it's sad. It makes me cry. Like when I go home, because I watch women go in and have abortions and walk out wounded. You know, it sucks, dude. I'm telling you, it sucks. But what we come here for is to call men to help. Not help us, but help the babies. Like we're not saying you got to hold signs out. You'll never hear me say that saying, hey, you need to hold signs out in front of churches with dead baby pictures. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, is that we need to repent of our apathy and, and actually do something, right? Actually work to make it illegal, expose it. It's the number one cause of death in Texas. It's the number one cause of death in the country. In the country. But what do we do? What is it, 3,000 babies a day? Yeah, and it's actually a lot more than that with IVF. No. Like it's, it's double that with IVF. Yeah. So there's probably um, over three million just in IVF deaths every year, in, um, and then abortifacient uh, pills that you can take because those are only surgical abortions. Okay, there's also um, like Plan B, and then you could take like up to like um, 12 weeks. You can take uh, pills that will make your uh, uterus lining uh, shrivel up, and it starves the baby to death, and then you have a miscarriage. So there's all those types of things where you don't even have to go to a doctor, right? I mean, you have to go to a doctor to get the medicine, but that's it. You know, so, you know, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. But if you like read Isaiah, the first chapter of Isaiah or Amos or Jeremiah, it's God talking to his people where abortion is commonplace in the land and his people aren't doing anything about it. Like God's not talking to the wicked people. He's talking to his people. And he says things like, though your prayers be many, I will not hear them. You know, you lift up your hands. I won't, I won't see them. You know, though your festivals be many, your congregations be many, they are a stench to my nostrils. I hate, I hate your worship. God says he hates our worship. And he's talking to his people in a land where child sacrifice was going and nobody was trying to make it, get rid of it. 
you know they just put up a, and so it fits for us you know we live in a land you know, there's no children coming uh, my hands are getting tired because <laughs> yeah. we just want to the Bible says to expose it right to hold back those that are being led to the slaughter right to to call a righteous man to stand up right. you know we're supposed to, and that's all we're doing like I, I don't hate anybody here mm-hmm. you know and we've had people be really mean to well, us well you shouldn't hate anybody if you're a Christian well there is I, I know what you mean yeah but there is there is righteous anger there is righteous you know like God says that he hates the hands that shed innocent blood yes. or he hates the sinner like he actually hates hates the sinner he doesn't hate sin because sin can't go to hell right or heaven but um, and he said, also, God also said that he loved to crush Jesus for our iniquity. God loved to crush him, right? Because God actually demands justice. He demands it. And and those that reject Christ after God's sacrifice of his only son, God says he's at enmity with, which is translated to the word hate means he has a real problem with you right you don't want god to have a real problem with you i have a question for you sure. what would you do for the christians that are in china what would i do for them yeah. would you advocate them to stand in front of a church with similar photos advocating for their government to stop them killing uh, the, the baby girls or their one child policy which they're now getting rid of well, right now, that if they just say they're a Christian, they get killed. So right now, the whole thing in China to do is not so much um, try to tell the government to quit killing babies, right? What they need to do is try to change the government, right, to where they can actually walk the streets and talk to people, you know, to change hearts and minds, to do evangelism, you know? Like, we have uh, friends that go to China and smuggle in Bibles and stuff, and... Uh, so, but we, yeah, the Bible says we should defend the innocent, right? We should speak out. But like, how can we send people from here, the number one cause of a death, and it goes unopposed, unopposed, man. All we try to do is regulate it. That's it. You know, like the Texas passed a dismemberment bill. Everybody's like, yay, you can't kill a baby now by pulling it apart. But you know what the law says that they passed is that first you have to kill the baby, then you can dismember it. So all they, the only thing they did, it didn't save any babies. Now they just inject a solution in the brain that kills it, and then they can pull it apart. And the reason they pull it apart is because they can't pull the whole thing out because the woman's uh, uterus is is still, you know, too narrow, right? Good so, morning, welcome. So, you know. But, again, how could we send people to China when here it's just mass slaughter? And it's more mass slaughter. Well, I mean, it's mass slaughter, and it's, it, it's yeah, it, it's beyond it, like, it is. I can't even speak how terrible it is. That's why I can't tell you what's worse, abortion or like a rape. You're, you're rape. Yeah. Well, I know I can tell you I have daughters, yeah. and I would much rather them get raped than murdered. Like if I had to pick one, because God can heal them and restore them when they're raped, but when they're dead, yeah. they can go to heaven. But I don't have my daughter anymore, and I would hate to not have any of my daughter. If you can, did you get one of these? I've got one before. All right. You checked out the... I did. Okay. Uh, and my wife and I, we, we discussed it. You went to Wisconsin? Huh? No, no, we discussed. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, we just had a uh, abolitionist society uh, big meeting in Wisconsin. So there's, that's why I said... You said I thought you said Wisconsin. No, no. Uh, like, you went to Wisconsin? I don't know if I've been... So you watch, watch this girl. She didn't, she didn't freak out at all, right? Yeah. Um, I've lived in Texas uh, going on seven years now. Thank you, ma'am. Back right, seven years. I'm a, a precinct chair in the Republican Party. I actually know, like he was saying, Jeff Leach. Tony Timberhold, I know all these guys. I know Abbott, he's not for making abortion illegal. Good morning.
The other thing is too, and you can tell how bad our society really is. In Texas, there's 13,000 kids right now in foster care waiting to be adopted. Like I said before, we don't do enough. Right, we don't. We, we don't feed enough homeless. We don't feed like, Right. We should be more Christian. Like we haven't failed to be pro-life. We failed to be Christian. That's it, man. Because we're supposed to take dominion of the land, right? God's given us the ability to take control. He's given us that. And so check this out. 13,000. Well, well, God's given us dominion, man. All right, so check this out. 13,000 kids right, waiting. We're not, you're not trying to usher in the, the new millennium. I'm, no, I'm just trying to be obedient to the word of God. No, right. So, okay. 13,000 kids right now waiting to be adopted. They're fully able to be adopted, and it's free to adopt them. The state pays for it, right? Pays for their college, right? Pays for their health care. There's no cost, all right? 13,000. Guess how many evangelical pastors, evangelical, in other words, like you and me, right? We're not like Mormons or Catholics, okay? Evangelical um, pastors there are in Texas. I don't know. 70,000. And we can't get these 13,000 kids adopted. That, that's, isn't that wicked? What's James 127 say, do you know? Okay, it's what is true and undefiled religion before God is taking care of the widows and the orphans in their time of need. That's what God says is true and undefiled religion to him. All right, that's what we should be doing. How can we not be doing that as people who know the Word of God, who studied the Word of God, who want to be obedient to the Word of God? Like, how can these 13,000 kids rot? Look at one of them right there. We adopted him out of foster care. He's the greatest kid I've ever met in my life. I have three of my own and we adopted six. These are like real they're like you. They're just like you, man. Like you are precious to God. Like, and these kids age out of foster care because nobody wants them because they're not babies. You know what um, Martin Luther King said? Um, who are these people in these giant buildings that say they worship God, but they ignore injustice in the land? How can they? I'm not saying that he he was a perfect man at all. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, he he would say, who are all where, who are all these people in these big huge buildings, while black men are being persecuted, and the white men, the people in all these buildings, are ignoring it. It's a good, and I say the same thing. Who are all these people sitting in these pews when injustice is going on in this land? When there's orphans abound? We're, this church alone could adopt every single orphan in Texas right now. Just this church. But there's 70,000 pastors around Texas and if just the pastors acted like Christians, and I, I'm not trying to give you a hard time, I'm just saying we gotta, we are gonna be held accountable for how we act. And if we go to church every Sunday, but Something don't... I do know is our churches don't do enough... Uh, education on uh, adopting. Having the right family is adopted. Not everybody should be adopting. Because True. Because they don't know the challenges, the special challenges. Do it to hell! <laughs> I got six of them, but I'll tell you what. I've been listening, and yes, there are many challenges to it. But God blesses you. He blessed me. He made me like a much more compassionate, patient person. You know, because my whole house could be ripped apart, and I could still have joy, and I could still help the kids. And my kids now are awesome. Like, God's really blessed me. Like, I would, it's the greatest thing I ever have done with my time. You know, it really has. I appreciate you listening. I'm, I, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. Just know that, you know. And I am, I am just a dork. A dork? Yeah. <laughs> I am. You know, like, I'm no great theologian, you know. It's just the things that are clear. Like, if they just teach the Bible, 
And if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you'll know what to do. In fact, the Bible even says, oh man, you know what you should do. You know what you should do. Bring justice and mercy to the land. You're making more assumptions that we don't teach the Bible here. No, 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 I'm not making that assumption. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that here's how we're supposed to judge, by the fruit. The fruit of the land. What's going on, right? And what's going on is we have m almost more orphans in Texas than any other state. We have almost more abortions than almost any other state. And it's not just because of our size. We have more pastors than just about any other state. Christendom abounds in Texas. Well, a form of it anyway, right? Because look at the orphans and look at the number one cause of death. Look at the fruit. And we, we are guilty of that, you know? And who do we look to? For direction our religious leaders our pastors and our pastors if they were just adopting kids promoting biblical standards there wouldn't be any we'd be in line waiting for the next orphan we'd be we'd be in line for it but we're not you know what we're doing we're driving super awesome bitching cars sorry that's my california <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful car. Yeah. It is. I know it is. I know it is. I'm, there's a lot of them, I'm, man. Look, the Mercedes. Look at. I mean, there's a lot. There's a sixty thousand dollar truck. We we grow fat in the day of slaughter. We grow fat on the word of God. Mm -hmm. We grow fat in our comfort. We grow fat in many many ways during the day of slaughter when abortion goes unopposed. And it really does. There's like there's four hundred people that showed up to make abortion illegal in Austin on Monday. 300 of them testified till three in the morning. That Bentley right there? I, I, I thank God that maybe I don't have that kind of money because I could, maybe couldn't handle it. Yeah. You know, having a lot of money is a root of a lot of evils. Families like that, families like that, you don't know them. Right those families, I pray for them every day because they have done so much for this church for the edification of these people for Sunday schools for evening night discipleship at the university. Right. That kind of money, I, don't, I might crack on that stuff. It might, you know, it, 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 who knows? I, I thank God every day for what he's blessed me with and I'm content with me too. I'm not going to say, you know, I'm going to judge that family because of that. So, right. you might check yourself. Well, the thing is, we have to check the fruit of the land, right? And if ask yourself this. If we had a thousand times more churches like this, a thousand times, okay, mm -hmm. would abortion be any closer to being illegal than it is now? A thousand times like this? A thousand times like this. Because this church does nothing, this pastor, these leaderships, do nothing to make abortion illegal. They don't even come out and say we should make it illegal. There's a bill. Let's go Let's go make it illegal. They don't do that. Or this. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have Fox News. I don't watch Fox News. You probably watch Fox News and you track this pastor probably. Yeah, you could just Google. If you but care, I, you could just do, Google. But I do know. <laughs> Church, we do. So. Okay, they regulate. No. They regulate. They don't work to make it illegal. Yep. Okay. We're in overflow, so. I'll be praying. Hey, All God right. bless you.